Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here with Deacon Wheeler from Cryptozoic Entertainment. Yes, looking How's at it going? Bronze, uh, originally published by Hobby World. Correct. Released in Spiel 2017. Yes. Now coming to the U.S. Yes. From you guys. Yeah. I assume we are in the Bronze Age. We are in the Bronze Age. We're building our civilization. We have uh, hunters, gatherers, and uh, herders, but I like calling them teepees, shacks, and yurts. Okay. And we are building from left to right and building our civilization. Okay. Uh, what's uh, really interesting about this game is it comes with a lot of these tiles and it really simulates kind of fog of war and exploration because as you are placing your tokens, I'll grab a few of these guys, as you get to a new spot, the next tile then is flipped. Do you see what's out there. Exactly. And as soon as you also get to a new spot, you're going to do what I'm calling a time draft as well. Okay. So if we're playing a two-player game like we have set up right here, three cards, two plus one. I get to take one of these, and then the rest of them would be dropped in that same spot. So when you get there, okay. you'd also get to draft from that same spot, okay. hoping to synergize my maybe what I'm trying to do. Uh, the game ends in one of three ways. If the last tile is fully populated with cubes, okay. if I run out of all 30 of my cubes, or you run out of all 30 of your cubes, all right. or if uh, one of these, uh, two of these four stacks disappears. Okay. And we build these at the very beginning of the game. They're equal. You technically have five stacks. And you set one off to the side, and then when the first one disappears, then you still have four stacks, and then the second one disappearing. Okay. And then you reveal on each one of these a certain technology type. Uh, the other ways points are scored is by creating trade routes left to right. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get uh, three in a row, you get three points. Five in a row, you get six points, seven, ten. Okay. And it doesn't always have to be an exactly uh, adjacent. adjacent. Uh, luckily, this doesn't steal it. But if someone knows that you're going for five and drops that first, then you'd have to start over right. for the uh, savanna. Okay. So how are you actually, what's, what's the nature of a turn? Correct. Right. So you are doing one thing on your turn, and then you're trying to synergize it later. Okay. So it's really an engineering building game where you pick up a card, and in this case, I'm going to pick up domestication. And mm -hmm. that domestication tells me I can build in either the mountains, the forest, or the jungle on a yurt or a teepee. Okay. And all domestication cards are exactly the same. I place it in front of myself, and I'll put it over here to make it easy to see, and it starts building a matrix. I can build a matrix of up to four cards wide and as far down as I want. Okay. Uh, your next card you must place adjacent to a card you have previously played. If you place, place it below, as long as it has the same name, it will reactivate the ones from above. So let's go ahead and show you masonry. If I place masonry first on my first turn, and I were to place a masonry below it, both of these would activate on my turn. And then I would remind myself by putting two cubes out and placing a forest yurt. Oh, and there's no forest yurts for a while, so maybe uh, a jungle yurt. And this one becomes a, uh, a plains shack. Okay. If you place next to any cards, the two adjacent sides of, so you, somehow something was here because you have built like this previously, placing here would do this and this and the card you ought to play at the same time. Okay. So you're starting to build this engine where by playing a new card later on, you might be able to truly synergize everything that you've been playing toward. Uh, mean, and the cool thing too is with the names, you can activate multiples. Right. Even if you have oh. placed like that okay. earlier, it, it will always go on. And if you've noticed, there's also bronze casting on the back of the name on every card, thus the name of the game. Bronze is a wild card. You can go anywhere with bronze. However, it does not synergize upward. Right. And that's the game. You're basically going to go for either of those three end okay. game conditions, and the person with the most points at the end wins. Okay. And because there's so many different tiles, and you shuffle out these cards at the beginning of every game, which are, uh, are bonuses for owning a whole province, right. every game is going to be so different. Okay. So you hit the end game condition, you got a majority for here, you're trying to build the rows here. Yeah, special powers or Correct. special points? Yes, like some of these will say if you have masonry, domestication, and uh, uh, authority in the same column, you get extra points. Or if you have only three of each technology type, if you don't get to a fourth one, you get extra points. Okay. You get extra points for extra trade routes. Blah, 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 blah. So you draft those and try to build your strategy around those cards, which makes it more unique if you're trying to push ahead. Right. I forgot to say one thing. Yes. Once you've pushed ahead, you can never go back. All right, good to know. Yes, that's the Which most is important. Which why you would want to fill up in here and correct. So once you've gone to a, so the strategy is maybe you want to move ahead quick and draft five or six things and really get your strategy down, but you've done then said I don't want you. I'm not going to get any of these points. Right. So depending on how the initial board layout comes, you might have some different ideas. Okay. So yeah, this okay. will be out at Gen Con. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Deacon. Look at bronze, and to continue yesterday.
Uh, Teo of Tiwaka. It's, <laughs> it's the day of Mesoamerican. It's a good one, right? Mesoamerican.